Hey YouTube, it's Tech Savvy Solution here, and I'm here with another video review. This time, it's of the Samsung Galaxy Nexus. So, this phone was released in November of 2011, and you may think, oh my gosh, you're so late, Tech Savvy Solution. Um, but I'm late because of two reasons. One, because I wanted to give this phone an adequate testing of day-to-day -day usage, um, and I've done extensive testing on this. And I want to give you an honest and thorough opinion of this device because of that. And two, I've been really, 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 really busy lately, so it worked out just fine. At any rate, you're going to be getting an in-depth review. If you're not used to my reviews, they're, they span about 20 minutes long, so grab some popcorn, pop squat, or go down to the video description below and look at the timestamps that I have set up. So if you want to jump to any section of the review, be it camera testing or web browser performance, you'll be able to find those hyperlinks down there and not have to sit through the entire video in order to see what you want to see, making your lives a little easier here. So first, I'm going to run down the specs of this phone. Second, I'm going to give you a visual tour of this phone while I'm at it. And then I'll give you some software, um, some software tours as to how well Ice Cream Sandwich fares on this phone as well as some browser tests, camera performance tests, and all that software junk that we all like to see. So, for specs, we have the display, we have the body, and then we have our memory and data and all of that. So, to dim for dimensions, we have 135.5 millimeters down, or tall, and then we have 67.9 millimeters across here, and you may think, oh my god, that's a huge phone, look at your hands are so small, um, and this phone is so big in your hands, but you look on the thickness side, and it's 8.9 millimeters thick, which is actually thin. So that, coupled with the weight of a comfortable 135 grams, makes for a phone that isn't quite as bulky as you may think. In terms of display, we have a Super AMOLED capacitive touchscreen, right here. So you can see we have awesome viewing angles. Looks as if it is printed right on the screen. Quite awesome. And what's even more awesome is that we have an HD resolution screen of 720 by 1280 pixels. And this display is a generous 4.65 inches, although I have to say that part of the screen is dedicated for these capacitive buttons down on the bottom. So in terms of the pixel density, we have something close to that of the iPhone 4s. It is 316 pixels per inch, whereas the iPhone 4 has 326 pixels per inch. But you have to keep in mind that the iPhone 4 has a 3.5 inch screen, whereas this screen is 4.65. So it's, you know, quite big, quite awesome. And yeah, I could do without, you know, the, the uh, extra pixels that the iPhone 4 may have. Um, in terms of the actual screen, though, we have Gorilla Glass, which is great for repelling scratches. Um, I have put a screen protector on this, and there are no scratches on this phone whatsoever. It's awesome. It's perfect. And in terms of construction, um, I do want to point out that it's very, very sturdy. Um, maybe not so much the back of this. You know, I'll show you right now as I take off the back cover. That's... I'll show you. Um, back cover is kind of flimsy, it's flexible, but it's, you can tell it's, you know, it's made of plastic, obviously. But, um, while we're inside the phone, I'll show you that we have a 1750 milliamp hour battery, which will definitely get you throughout the day, and through my couple months of testing, I've had no issues with, you know, having at least a 15 hour work day in terms of using this phone and it's lasted me throughout all of it so that's pretty great um in terms of camera we have a five megapixel camera up here with the flash and then we have a slot for a sim card i'm using at&t right now and so far call, call quality has been great on that no complaints and speakerphone is loud as well okay so I'm just going to put this cover back on, and so you can see, it's not the easiest to put back on, it's not the most intuitive. kind of miss um, the HTC G2's hinge, where you just like slide a little 
switch and then it allows you to take off or put on the cover at ease. But this one you have to like, I don't know, cross your fingers and press on the sides to get it back on. Not too big of an issue, but one that I was having right at this moment. So on the side here we have a volume rocker. We have on the bottom your standard micro USB port and then you have a microphone and then standard 3.5 millimeter headphone headphone jack. And on this side we have pins for a dock that you can set your Nexus on. And then your power slash sleep and wake button. And up top we have nothing. But on the front here we have a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera. And then for here of course you have where your ear would go for your phone and you can or when you're making calls. And again the volume coming out of this is great. Um, I think the sound is good too. Alright, in terms of internal specs, we have a 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor on this phone. So it is fast. You think one gigahertz? Like back in the day when one gigahertz was fast, now it's like, you know, not and it used to be the standard now, and then now it's like dual core is the standard. But you have more than the standard in that you have 1.2 gigahertz. That's an A9 Cortex processor. So it's quite fast. And then of course you have in you know Techland the Power VR SG X540 GPU. I don't know what that means, unfortunately, but um it makes for great graphics processing, as you will see in a moment. And then you have all of your usual things like sensors, accelerometer, gyro, proximity, compass, and barometer, interestingly enough. And we have messaging included all of your G apps. And then your browser supports HTML and Adobe Flash, obviously. We don't have a radio, unfortunately, but we do have a GPS. I just tested it out yesterday um, down near Chicago and Evanston, and it worked splendidly. And it was able to handle uh, GPS uh, instructions, navigation instructions, and um, things like that while I was navigating my way down the city. Now, I am running on AT&T's um, HSPA network, so I do get um, pretty good speeds down the Chicagoland area, and that probably accounts for why the GPS was working so well. There wasn't lag, you know, there wasn't too much lag at all. But that aside, um, I mentioned battery life, but I want to give you um, the specs on that. It's been, it has an estimated talk time of 290 hours. And, or sorry, 17 hours and 40 minutes. Standby time is 290 hours. So this phone will get you through your day-to-day -day stuff. All right, so that was a lot of specs. So right now I'm going to walk through the interface of this phone. First thing I want you to notice is, is that we have three capacitive buttons down here, which will serve as navigation buttons throughout the entire phone. So. Um, it's part of the screen, but every application that you go to, you have these three buttons. It's all part of the screen, as you can see, it's flush, the screen. So we have the back button, the home button, and you'll notice that we have these, kind of looks like window panes on the right. What these window panes do is show re snapshots of recently opened applications so that you can jump back and forth between the stuff that you've been doing. It's actually multitasking. I'm gonna get a drink of water, just really quick. All right, so if you notice, um, an interesting fact is that this interface is quite similar to that of the HP interface of the cards that they had. Um, and the designer of this interface, uh, who had the idea of this interface, is actually the same for both the one um, for the Galaxy Nexus, and the one for the HP devices, and the HP phones, which have since been abandoned, unfortunately. But, um, history aside, let's go ahead and visit the music application. So, I will give you a good idea of, like, the sound quality and such. So, so you can see, um, this is the new music application, and instead of having a screen that changes with um, whatever 
music that you click. Normally, if you had like an album cover that was blue, then the background of this would change to blue. If you had an album cover that had orange colors in it, then if you like touched it and switched it, it would like morph into some orange background. Um, but uh, Google Music has since changed this new um, sleek interface where it features dark blue and cyan. So as you can see, scrolling is quite smooth. It's a lot more stable than the one before that the version of music I was talking about before. And let's go ahead and play. Let's see. One of my favorite songs. So this is your audio quality for that. And then you can always scrub between different sections of the song. And then you also have options of shuffle or repeat. And then options over here. So you can add to playlist. Or you can say, hey, I like the song. So what you can do is, um, hold on, let me go ahead and pause this. Is that, um, you have icons, shortcut icons here. So if you click on the market, then you can automatically access that straight from the music application. And it'll take you to the music section of the market. And here you have the option to search for music. So let's say romance at a short notice. Here is a song that we were just listening to. And then here are your settings. So with these settings, um, one part of the setting in particular is offline music only. So when you click this, then it'll only allow you to play offline music because what happens is if you're on a limited data plan like I am you might be playing a song that was uploaded to Google's music database but wasn't part of the actual phone so you don't have actually have the file on the phone you just have access to the cloud and when you play the song then it takes up some of your data and you may be listening to tons and tons of songs and the size of the song is how much data you use to play it so you can run out of data quite fast. So if you say offline music only, then Google or Google Music will make sure that you only play the songs that you actually have on the phone. So you save on your data. Or what you can do is make available offline, which makes this song or downloads kind of the song to your phone. So you won't be using any data next time you play the song. You can do that. And it shows you conveniently how much storage you have free on this phone. So, speaking of storage, I wanted you to note that um, I have 16 gigs on this phone of internal storage. However, there's no slot, as you may have noticed when we took a look at the back of this phone, for a micro SD card. And unfortunately, um, you're not allowed to expand your memory, which I kind of find disappointing. But 16 gigs is plenty of storage for the average user. So, that was the music player. Let's go ahead and revisit our next application, the Google Market Play, Sco ah, Play Store now. So I'm going to just go through this briefly because um, it's something that you're going to see in every single Android device review, and you've probably seen it many times before. But basically, you have four sections, apps, music, books, movies, and what you're um, going to do here is if you search for, for example, Viber, which is a texting application, you're not only going to search for Viber in apps, but you're also going to search for it in books and music, and there should be another category, but if there, if um, Viber doesn't show up in that category, it's not going to show up in the search results. But it's nice that Google organizes the results in this way, so that if you're like, no, I was talking about the book and I spelled Viper wrong, then you could be like, oh, books, and go ahead and um, search for that.
So, on to the next application. We're going to be touring the web browser. And I know you're all anxious to see some web results or some uh, web comparisons and see how well it loads on this. But I want you, I want to take you through the new interface that Ice Cream Sandwich um, introduces with the Galaxy Nexus. So with Ice Cream Sandwich, you have um, aesthetically a different appearance. But what's awesome is that now you have a new way to organize your tabs. So I just click that button up top and hold on, let me open up a new tab. And you can see that you can switch to your tabs like this. Your bookmarks also exist in little squares up here too. So I found that pretty cool. And if you want to get rid of a tab, you just slide or you can X out of it. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Engadget.com. See if we can show you some stuff. It loads in the mobile version, but I'm going to head up to the desktop version of this. So the loading bar is up top in blue. Kind of blends in with the mobile view banner. There we go, it's done loading. So as you can see, scrolling is quite smooth. And then we can zoom in and out. And that's smooth as well. Occasionally you get a little bit of a hiccup, but overall I think it's definitely workable. And then you could double tap to zoom. Oops. There we go. And I'll zoom into the paragraph. And uh, if you, you know, zoom into the paragraph, it's not going to realign or reorganize the paragraph, which I think is is pretty um, okay, because usually when you have phones that will rearrange a paragraph so it fits in the screen, you get all this, oh my gosh, the browser has to worry about organizing the paragraph, and you get lag, or it doesn't organize the paragraph as well, and it's like buggy, but, you know, so that's why I don't really mind whether it reorganizes the paragraph or not. I can read, you know. So, um, that's pretty much what the browser offers. Um, I want to show you just a bit of the other settings. Um, one of the awesome settings that's included in the new browser is save for offline reading. So we have applications that do, um, third-party applications that do something similar to this, but now that it's integrated in the browser, it's very convenient. Fortunately, I don't know why it says that I can't save for offline reading. Um, I'm gonna see if I can try a different website. Uh, let's try, I don't know, Flute Fingerings. And save an offline version of that. So, have Modern Flute Fingering Chart. Okay. So that's useful if you forget how to finger your fourth octave notes and you want to have reference to that. You can save for offline reading. As you can see, I have a lot of trill fingering charts already um, saved on here. If you don't know already, I played a flute. I'm going to major in flute in college next year, so it's pretty awesome. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off all data. So I'm going to go over here and toggle that. This is the brightness toggle, but I'm going to turn off Wi-Fi, go to settings, and then I'm going to go ahead and go to data usage. As you can see, I only have 300 megabytes per month, which sucks, um, but I'm going to turn off mobile data. And then now I'm going to go to the browser, and then it says you have the option of going live, but okay, let's just to prove that I'm not online, I'm going to go to Google and see if it loads up. Let's go click here, see what page is not available. But now I'm going to go, here, let's exit out of Modern Flutes, okay. I'm going to go to Saved Pages, then go to Modern Flute Fingerings, and there it is. It's right there. So it's not going to give you that error. All right. So that is the basics of the web browser. Um, there are more that I can go into, but um, I want to just give you a little taste for it yourself. 
because we gotta move on to other things besides web browser. Well, the next thing I'm going to move on to is camera. So I'm gonna click on camera right here. And as you can see, um, looking through a camera, through a camera isn't exactly the best, but you have options like, see if I can take a picture of my desktop or at least of my, or not take a picture, but show an image of my laptop here. You have tap to focus. You can see that green box. And again, this is focusing, but this camera that I'm recording with is not. But you have tap to focus. You have a front facing camera. You have your zoom toggle over here on the side. And then you have your settings. And your settings are quite simplistic. You have no flash, um, white balance. You have scene selection. So you could scroll. Oh, can't scroll. Um, but you have like party scene. I'll adjust it. I've never really used this, but I'm going to keep it on auto. And then you also have other settings like location settings or, pix or picture size. And of course, um, the largest is going to be five megapixels, but it takes pretty decent quality or quality photos, so you have that to play around with. Also, you'll notice here we have options for the video camera as well as a panoramic mode for taking pictures. Um, let's go ahead and go to the video camera. With the video camera, we just have a very simple interface um, with settings like I think that's timer, I believe. Yes. And then, of course, options for the quality of the photos. You have HD, um, HD 1080p, 720p, or 480p um, SD. And then, of course, location settings if you'd like. And that's pretty much it for the camera interface. And you also have zoom. Curious to see um, if I start recording right here. Yes, you can also zoom while you're recording. How convenient. So... That's pretty much it. And I'll show your recent pictures up here. And that's that. Um, an interesting thing is that your three capacitive buttons turn into dots, so they're not obtrusive. It keeps the whole interface quite simple and um, minimalistic, so that's great. But I know that this is my home button, so I'm going to click on that and show you the rest of the Google Nexus and what ice cream sandwich has to offer. Galaxy Nexus, my bad. So, um, as you can see, we have the scrolling the home pages and that uh, th doesn't give a little bounce, just scrolls like this. Um, and I find that quite nice. Now, if the interesting thing is if you're going to add a widget, if you tap the hold, it's not going to prompt you with a set of widgets. It's going to prompt you to change your wallpaper if you'd like. So, I'm not going to change my wallpaper just yet. But if you want to go and add widgets, then you're going to hit that center button that I showed you, which has all of your applications. And up top here, you have access to all of your widgets. And what's nice oops, is that you have snapshots of what the widgets will look like. So for example, um, let's go to bookmarks. So if we have bookmarks here, I'm going to tap and then hold that here. And so I'm going to put local. That's my other email address. All right. So, haha, <laughs> AP Biology. Um, so here are all my bookmarks. And what you can do with this on um, these native Google widgets is that you can resize them. So we have all of your widgets over here, and it's really cool. So that you have you can choose how much you want to display. Um, you can choose where you want to put this um, widget. So you could do that here and put it on the center if you'd like and it's really nice and it's very fluid as well of course um i can choose which browser i want to access that but i don't really need to all right so widgets aside this uh, same thing goes for your calendar application But widgets aside, let's take a look at just the interface um, of the apps and widgets. And everything, and you'll notice this throughout 
the interface of Ice Cream Sandwich, everything is about swiping from side to side. So if we go to our YouTube application, here's a folder, quite nice. Um, how about, yeah, let's go to YouTube application. I'll show you folders and stuff a little later. Oh, of course, I don't have a network connection. All right, so um, while my Wi-Fi is actually starting up, um, let me show you the basics of just putting things into folders. So I know you're like, folders are boring, but it looks really cool on an ice cream sandwich. So I'm going to group my pianos together. And as you can see, it groups them into this little circle, which is our folder. And you can add up to this many applications in one folder, which kind of takes up the entire screen once you open them. But... Um, yeah, you can't add any more than this. So once you have that, then you can go ahead and name the folder to Pianos. And as you can see for the Google keyboard, we have Ice Cream Sandwich, the Ice Cream Sandwich keyboard, which has a blue theme to it. And then it just, it looks like the gingerbread keyboard, but blue. But you'll notice when you're typing that the suggestions are a lot more accurate, a lot faster, a lot smoother. And I just am a bigger fan of this type of keyboard than the original keyboard. So we're done. And this is how you create folders. All right, so we're done with folders. Let's go to YouTube. And I'm going to browse. Let's go to comedy. And go ahead and... How I broke my hand? Hmm... Alright, so if you notice in this interface, everything is about sliding. <laughs> oh god. Um, it's a gray seahorse. Okay, so that's her talking about her dog in her hand. Um, but everything is scrolling from side to side, and that's Google's new theme for Ice Cream Sandwich. Thought it'd be interesting to know. But anyways, um, I gave you also a little look on the new interface of YouTube, so... Hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you want to know more about Google's new look on YouTube, uh, just let me know. But I'm sure you've seen it on a bunch of other Android phone reviews, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. So what I am going to spend a little more time on is the Gmail interface. And this is something that I really like because it's new, obviously, for Ice Cream Sandwich uh, or for the Google Android um interface and firmware so as you can see we have a really nice um, spaced out and aesthetically pleasing interface where we have all of your messages down here and you can scroll quite smoothly you have the option to change email addresses up here by clicking on that shows you how much is in your inbox which I have more than 2,000 so it's a lot of mail um, and you can also have shortcuts to create new message there and then search here and then here's your you can select messages here you can archive them Oops. well this is the archive button um, and then you also have a refresh button down here, and of course, settings, and such over here. Oh, and it just force closed on me. So, uh, it says waiting for sync. I'm not going to wait for that, but I want to just give you a brief tour of the new mail application. So, those are about the core applications for Google. Um, what's new is Google Drive, which you'll see in other Android devices just besides um, those running on Ice Cream Sandwich. But for those of you that don't know what Google Drive is, it's Google Docs, but revamped to include all different kinds of formats. So it's like an online drive for you to access wherever you are on whatever device that runs on Android. So um, aside from that, everything is about the same. Um, we have a phone, obviously, that's different. Um, keys are different. You have access to uh, the recent calls and missed calls. And then you also have a new interface for contacts. Um, unfortunately, I will not be showing you contacts because I have personal information on this phone that 
um, it's too much of a hassle to block every single name and to just, yeah. Um, I don't want you calling my mother or anything, so um, I'm gonna leave that to, you know, just, just what it is right now. So, if there's anything else I missed, um, I'd like you guys to let me know so that I can go ahead and review it, but I think I've, you know, covered everything here. Um, let me go ahead and show you a bit of the calendar, because that's different as well. So, we have options here on day, week, month, and agenda view. So, if we look at agenda view, we see um, a list of things that we have to do. We also have a month view, which has... It doesn't show you the exact appointments, but it shows you what is going on throughout that day and if a lot of events scheduled, so that's why it's quite busy. But the ones up top are the specific appointments that you have. So it shows up top appointments you have early in the morning and then on the bottom appointments that you have later on in the evening. So it gives you an idea, oh my gosh, I'm totally not free on Friday. Or I am free in the morning and 4th, but yeah. So that's uh, pretty much the calendar application, and hitting this button will take you to the specific day, or it'll highlight the spe specific day. So you can go to agenda view, or you can click on day view, and see, hey, I have to do my tech reviews, which I'm doing right now. So that is the calendar application. I'm going to close with these two things, and uh, these two things are what I think are one of the major differences between the two firmwares that we have status bar that looks different you know pictures say it all and you have access to settings up here and our settings have a variety of other options that uh, gingerbread and previous android versions do not so we have as you've seen before data usage up top and the data usage shows you how much data you've used in a specific time frame. So we can adjust the time frame by adjusting these bars over here. And it shows about 31.22 megabytes used, but for the entire month, about 82 megabytes used. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn that back on. You also have settings for Wi-Fi, and I use a lot of Wi-Fi on this device, so you can see here. And it also gives you a percentage of what application is using how much of your data so you can be like oh my gosh i have to turn off notifications on facebook because they're taking so much memory or maybe i just have to go off of facebook so i don't waste so much memory by being on it so much um but regardless of that um, i think this is a cool feature and it is included in new firmware so i'm just briefly going back to the other um, settings here. Um, we have development options in the bottom, which I think is maybe specific just to my phone, but you have these uh, settings over here too. And I have show touches, which gives a visual representation of where I'm touching on the phone. And then we also have um, security settings. Oops, location services. Security settings over here. Owner info that you can show or not on your lock screen. And then also storage, which shows you um, by category how much space you're using up on your phone. and also gives you a visual up top here. And then sound, you have, of course, your traditional settings. And language and inputs which gives you a new interface to the keyboards available, and then, of course, your settings on each of these keyboards. And yeah, that's the basics, um, and that's pretty much a good look at what um, we have to offer for the Samsung Galaxy Nexus, as I said before. And now I'm going to close for real now, because I know you're probably, like, sleeping right now, or... Maybe just wanting to go see a different YouTube review and go on with your lives. So that, um, and my battery is running out. My storage is running out on my video camera. But I hope I covered everything, or close to everything. And if you want to see anything else, please let me know. And suggestions for reviewing different phones are always welcome. And I will take your suggestions into consideration. But for now, I'm going to sign out and let you guys go on with your lives. And... I hope to see you guys um, on the next video review or tutorial. 
please comment, rate, subscribe, and yeah, thanks for watching.